All right, so uh, no time has passed for me, so there's noises still, lots of loud as hell construction noises in the middle of the night. Um, what we're going to do today is we're just going to make it so that the icons get set up correctly, and that's put down here. I deleted the line here because I forgot this, uh, sorry, the line here because I forgot that in the update it gets set every every frame, so there's no reason for us to worry about being too aggressive about it. Uh, but down here we're going to do for int a equals zero a is less than all toggle sprites dot count a plus plus and we say if now there's two ways to do this normally you might think that this is the easiest way to do it you just say if uh, unit dot mp is greater than a then we do our set it to true it's actually much easier in this particular case we don't need to do an if statement we just say all toggle sprites a dot happy equals unit mp greater than a. See? You don't have to do this kind of optimization if you don't like. It's just something that passes the time, I guess. And you can see that now they're all false rather than all true. Now, our next step is we want to be able to hold shift and charge those up. But I do want to change the camera angle while I'm out here. So let's go ahead and pull our camera back and up a little bit like this. Yeah, more of a Batman viewpoint. Um, so we want to be able to hold shift, and to do that, we're going to need to make it so that our avatar controller understands the concept of holding shift. So let's open this up. And we've got all of these attack updates, move updates. Um, what we don't have is any concept of uh, uh, holding shift. So is that considered an attack update? Is that considered a move update? Uh, well, it's really its own thing. Um, but the attack update function, we'll go ahead and leave the attack update solely for attacks. Uh, so instead we were going to call a um, uh, option update. We can call it whatever we would like, really. Unprotected virtual void option update. And basically we want to make it so that if we hold shift, then uh, we charge. The thing is that I keep saying shift, but what we actually want to do is hold the charge axis or the charge button. So we we'll say if input dot get button, and then we want to get a button. How about uh, charge? So if we're charging, then we want to increase or count towards an increase in our MP. So we can say MP. Oh, we don't have MP here because it's a battle unit, right? Mm, we're going to have to fetch the battle unit. So battle unit bu equals get component battle unit. And then we say bu.mp uh, plus equals. And we don't have any rate for this or anything. So uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to come up with a rate for it. So let's go over into the battle unit here. And we're going to have to come up with a rate. So public float mp charge per second, and we're going to go ahead and start that off at 1. Here in the avatar controller, we'll say plus equals mp charge per second, oh, sorry, bu.mp charge per second, times time dot delta time. And that's pretty straightforward, except for one small issue. Do, 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 do. How long does it take you to figure this issue out? Come on. It always surprises me when Unity stumbles for like 15 seconds over something that I would consider pretty basic. The problem is we don't have a button named Charge. Um, and we won't be able to get a button named Charge until Unity decides to realize that and crash. There we are. Input button Charge is not set up. So we have to go back into our uh, Edit, Project Settings, Inputs, and we have to create a Charge button. Now the thing is that there's actually already some things associated with shift. I just don't happen to know what they are. Uh, so we're going to just create a new, another button. And if shift collides with something later, we'll be careful. So this is going to be shift. And that way we'll be able to mm, left shift. Left, left shift. There we are. And that way we'll be able to change it in the in the options menu if we want to. We don't have to always keep it as left shift. And it's a lot more um, efficient that way. 
Now this quick snap, <coughs> this quick snap means that it will instantly start to charge the moment you hold shift. If you'd like to change that, we could change this gravity to one or something, and then it would ramp up uh, towards, um, well, in this case it wouldn't, because we're just checking whether or not it's true. We're not actually, see, we're not actually checking what the value is. We're just saying if the charge button is being held, then charge it full, so that gravity wouldn't matter in this case. So it's empty. Let's hold shift. There you see. Uh, but this does introduce a small issue. When we have a fraction of an MP, uh, it still counts as having a whole MP on the visual. So let's go over into our battle status indicator here. And this is not actually what we need to do. What we need to do is greater than or equal to A plus 1. Uh, and that way, when we're at point 1, it doesn't count as having 1 MP. It counts as having no MP. So now it should take a little bit longer. Hold shift and much better. So that's how you can do this. Now later on we'll have some NPC units and we'll have an AI that charges up the uh, the values here and all that stuff. For now however I think that that's probably too large. Sorry. Hiccups all of a sudden. Let's go ahead and change this uh, to a much more... <gasps> oh geez I really got the hiccups. I'm sorry these two episodes have been crap bad audio quality and me losing track of what I'm doing and getting the hiccups. Uh, so we have a couple of options for shrinking it. I think the easiest is to reduce these values to 32 rather than 64. But we could do whatever we would like. That might be too small. Well, it's okay. We can also make it something that can be adjusted in an options menu somewhere. So in this case, we now have an easy way to see our current charge level, but we have no way to spend charge. Um, we don't have any concept of using that MP, but we do have the concept of generating it, and that's a good enough start for now. In the next episode, we will go ahead and create some way to use that MP. Uh, we'll make the heavy attack take up MP. Hmm, it's only been seven minutes. Let's do that now. Let's make it so this heavy attack takes up an MP point. So we go over into our battle unit. Nope, nope, it's the avatar controller, right? And we go down into our attack update. Oh, but wait. Right now, if we're holding shift, we can still attack while we're holding shift. See? So hold shift and attack at the same time. That's no good. What we'd like to do is, if we're holding shift, we're not allowed to attack. Uh, and in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to make this return a bool rather than anything else. Uh, and we say return true if it's charging and return false if it's not. To keep track of that, we're going to go ahead and add in uh, this part here, uh, all inputs that aren't um, uh, movement or attacks, if update was optioned, which is actually true. That's exactly what it is. <coughs> so that happens to be perfect. And then what we do is we say, if not option update, then attack update, which just means if the option hasn't, um, if, the, if we're not charging, then you can attack, but otherwise you're not allowed to attack. Uh, so down here in the attack update, we've got the attack heavy and the attack light. And you remember how we do this is we wait for the attack heavy to happen. And if the attack heavy, if the attack light, if the mouse button up doesn't happen fast enough, then we attack heavy. We're going to block this out, however, and we're going to say that uh, here we see if attack delay counter is greater than attack heavy delay. Uh, if these, if if we've held the button down long enough to do a heavy attack, we set this right. What we actually need to do is say battle unit bu equals get component battle unit. And at this point, it's probably clear that we need to have battle unit as a permanent feature. So let's go ahead and add that in. Protected battle unit battle unit. And then here in awake, we can say battle unit equals get component battle unit. But, if you're ever doing this, you have to remember to have the require component. Otherwise you'll get confused later on. Or someone will. Might not be you. So here, we no longer need to say boo. We just need to say battleunit.mp and battleunit. And down here we will say the same thing. We'll say if battleunit.mp is greater than or equal to 1 battleunit.mp minus minus 
and attack. Very straight, straightforward, right? So now when I hit play, and I want to hold down my attack, so let's click and hold. Click and hold, and you can see that I'm not attacking, and when I do let up with the button, nothing happens. So that is uh, one way where right now we've got this thing where the battle attack light doesn't happen if you've held the button for long enough to make it the battle attack heavy. And we actually need to disable that. Uh, we did this specifically to avoid having situations where things go wrong um, and, the, and the battle attack light overrides the battle attack heavy. But we actually need the reverse because a battle attack heavy is not guaranteed to go through. We want the light attack to happen if the heavy attack can't happen. See? So we're going to hold down shift, get ourselves some MP, and try these heavy attacks. Wham. However, that appeared to take a lot more than one MP. The reason for that is because that heavy battle attack animation happens every single frame. So we set, we set our heavy battle attack every single frame here. See? And that means that uh, we don't ever... Um, uh, we don't ever not heavy attack. We're always stuck in the heavy attack mode. And um, there's a lot of issues with that. And this is the point where we have to start seriously considering our animation framework. Because <clears throat> what we do is, in the animator itself, if we open up the animator, what we have is from movement, we can either attack, levy, uh, attack heavy or attack light using these simple transitions. And that means that if at the start of any frame attack heavy is true or attack light is true, it will march off into these specific animation sequences and go through them until it's complete and then return back to movement. That means that what we have right now is we say, well, check and see whether or not we're ready to attack heavy. And if we are ready to attack heavy, just spam the attack heavy uh, uh, the attack heavy boolean. Just spam it, because it doesn't matter if we spam it, right? We're going to enter into attack heavy and stay there for the length of the attack, so who cares? Well, now we care, because now if we keep spamming it while we're in the attack heavy sequence, then what happens is we lose MP. We continually lose MP. So what we actually need to do is we need to have the animation be what resets the attack heavy sequence rather than us of uh, resetting the attack heavy sequence. Um, and that means that what ideally we would be able to add it here. Unfortunately there is no um, uh, ability to add in a function call and add, add a transition. If there was that would be really really nice. But since we don't have that option we have to actually go into the attack heavy animation itself. Uh, no, not, not in Blender. Uh, I don't know why you would think I would want to do that. Uh, you have we have to go into it in our system here. Um, Blender uh, and Hero One attack heavy. Here it is, and we need to open this up in the inspector. And uh, yeah, we can't actually open it like we'd like. You actually have to go into and Hero, and then you can go over to animations. Yep, it's a little bit of a roundabout way to do things. You do see that we have at the end. We've already got an event. What in the world is that event? Well, that event is the one where we actually trigger the... Um, uh, where, where is the events list? Here it is. Uh, is that not an event? I was pretty sure it was. Hmm. I'm not sure what that little widget is, but this is our events system, and it's not, it doesn't exist right now. So uh, we're going to have to add a new event, and that new event is that we're going to have it um, have an attack reset. And that's all we need to do. But the uh, I did put it in the wrong spot. We've got to drag it over here. Uh, we want it to be near the end. Um, so that's all well and good except for this oh wait there's the attack heavy function so there is an attack heavy function which is right here where is the one we just added okay so this black bar must be where we are in the animation okay so this is this is just our animation uh, panning tool that's right Sorry, it's been a while since I've done this, but what happened to our attack complete? Hmm. 
Hmm. How do I say, okay, do it. That's good. Thank you. It's not getting added. So there is our attack heavy. Can you not add multiple events? That doesn't seem... I think I'm doing something wrong, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the attack heavy event. So we have this attack heavy event, which is where we actually hit the enemy and the enemy goes flying. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and use that event as our proxy for um, uh, for our attack being complete. It's not entirely true. We still have the recovery to go through, but it's true enough. Uh, and as I recall, this was not anywhere near as late in the attack. It was somewhere in the middle. Um, so let's go ahead and fix that up just a little bit here. We can deal with that more later. I really want to know how to add another event. I should be able to just add it, but it's not it's not taking. Hmm. Well, you can leave a comment, um, and I'm sorry, I'll have to remind you that I am sick as hell, uh, which is probably why it's not working. Uh, so we have over here in Anhero 1, We've got the avatar animation responder. This has to be here because it has to be on the same object as the animator, which is uh, you know, something we have to deal with all the time. And here's our attack heavy. So what we need to do is we need to go up to our uh, Anhero battle unit controller and set the animations to, actually the animator is right here. Uh, so what we need to do is over here in our avatar controller, uh, we do this animator.setbull attack heavy false we need to do that over here. But of course we're going to have to actually fetch the animator to do that because I don't think we st we don't store it at all. That'll do. And that will reset our heavy attack. The only question is, how are we going to communicate all of this back to the avatar controller? And the answer is, we don't. Uh, the avatar controller needs to have a different method uh, of dealing with this. And that is that we do not actually uh, care about anything after this until the attack button comes back up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, um, if animator get bool we can do it th this way is probably easiest attack heavy so if we are currently not attacking then we can try try to do our attack and that way we'll be able to save it up a little bit but even this isn't perfect because our actual attack happens far before we're ready to attack again what we need to do is we need to have it so that uh, the player cannot actually use up more mana by holding down the mouse button because there's only one um, cycle per per system set. So there's a, the, if you hold down the mouse button for a long time, I don't want you to keep burning mana in the last half of your attack. So instead of doing it this way, what we have to do is we have to say, if all of this happens, then we're waiting for the mouse up. So let's go ahead and create a new variable, which we'll call protected bool waiting for mouse up. And what we're going to do here in our attack update is we're going to say um, if uh, heavy attack delay counter is greater than heavy attack delay and not waiting for mouse up, then we can do our heavy attack. Down here, we're going to set waiting for mouse up to false. So waiting for mouse up is a little bit similar to heavy attack delay counter, um, except for it's outside of it. Uh, it happens out. It happens first. So once you're waiting for mouse up. Uh, we stop caring what the heavy attack delay counter is. Uh, the other option is we could set the heavy attack delay counter to a value like negative one and, uh, and some illegal value and check it. Um, but in this case I'm, I prefer waiting for mouse up because there are a lot of other situations where we might be waiting for mouse up. Um, in this case we can still do some illegal mouse, uh, some illegal mana burns. If we were to do another heavy attack 
after the first heavy attack landed, but before we had recovered enough to actually fire off the next attack, um, then we would end up burning MP. But I can't solve that until I figure out why I can't create multiple events on that animation. So uh, for now, this will do fine. And I'm sorry if that was confusing. I think I probably need to wait another couple of days before I get back into this sort of programming. So let's charge up our MP, and then let's do a heavy attack here. And you can see how it didn't use up all of our mana. Oh wait, look at that! The events suddenly exist! What? what? Um, hold on, let's go back into our animator and see what happened here. Oh. No? What? Are they over here? Are these them? No. Oh, I see. This isn't the panner. This is... Okay, I got really confused by this, and I'm still pretty confused. Where are the other events? Alright, so there's something wrong with the display here. Um, I clearly cannot see any other events. Uh, so, I'm not sure what the deal is. Uh, there have been a couple of patches since my last download, so perhaps in one of the new patches it's fixed. Uh, I'm almost cer certain that unless you are programming this on the day you see it, uh, it's probably been fixed by now because this is a ridiculous bug. But basically, uh, once I can access where uh, the attack heavy attack complete is, I'll put it at the end of the animation, and then what will happen is that will be what sets the bool, and that will happen at the last frame, uh, and that will allow it to not have any overlap at all. And obviously the animation event, new event, well, I'll just delete it um, if, if I can figure out how. So uh, sorry about the weird bugs and the weird errors. Um, I'm not at all uh, satisfied with this at the moment, so I'm not going to uh, put, the, put the project up. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on it. Maybe wait another couple of days until I've recovered a little bit more. Anyhow, sorry for the scatterbrained project. Uh, this is not going quite as well as it normally does, probably because of that loud-ass noise in the background all the time. Have a good one.